So now I've laid out all sorts of pro business processes in mortgage lending, and now I'd like to do uh, a couple things with them. In this talk, I want to talk about what the implications of all these processes and how they are divided up among different industry participants for something called mortgage relief. This was a these were proposals that were made uh, in the at the height of the mortgage crisis 2008-2009 to offer borrowers who were in trouble lower rates and lower outstanding principal in order to have fewer foreclosures. Now if a um, you know a, a private lender who owns the loan wants to offer mortgage relief uh, voluntarily that's that's something that they can figure out how to do but what this but what mortgage relief I'm talking about was policy proposals and you know, legislation that was that was trying to require this. And you can think of this mortgage relief as taking one of two forms. One is you sort of you modify an existing loan. So somehow the loan the loan is the same, it's the same actual mortgage loan, but you change the interest rate of the principal. Or you could have a new loan. That's the alternative, is just, just declare this loan paid off, the existing loan paid off, and come up with a new loan. So you can either modify an existing loan or do a new loan. So from a business process perspective, I want to show how each of these can cause problems. Well, modifying an existing loan, um, the, uh, the issue there is the in original loan is still sitting in a, in a county recorder office. So what do you do about the loan that's been recorded? How do you can you do you go in, into that office and just cross out the interest rate or the principal and put something else in? Uh, who who does that? Uh, is is that legal in the various uh, places? Is is that is that does that work legally? Um, the other another problem is, comes from the uh, security standpoint that if that loan is in a security and one of the results of securitization is that in terms of business process the default risk and the financial risk uh, the interest rate risk are now being borne by t two different parties uh, or in, in different proportions in different parties so the person who has the uh, interest rate risk, or who, who's focused on bearing, uh, whose main concern is the interest rate on the mortgage, uh, is hurt. So the person who's looking to get uh, get interest on the loan, uh, the person who's expecting the interest rate to stay the same gets hurt. The person who's bearing the default risk perhaps gets helped because they don't have to uh, pay up for a default. So you've got two parties with different interests because of the way the securitization process works um, somehow have to agree on this loan modification. Um, one of the advantages of having a new loan is that the existing loan is prepaid and the prepayment of the loan the prepayment of the loan is what takes care of the person who owns the security uh, in order to get income from interest and principal on the security. Now they may not be happy about being prepaid in it at a particular point in time uh, especially if interest rates are falling, they uh, they can be hurt by that, and they could conceivably want to sue. Uh, it, you know, in 2006, uh, it wasn't in the offering circular that uh, these loans might be uh, that 
might be refinanced uh, by some program and at a lower rate with lower principal. Uh, it's now currently disclosed in the offering circular, but it wouldn't have been disclosed several years ago. So, that the, so even a new loan can cause legal problems for the people who are expecting the, to get their interest in principal uh, as originally written. But modifying an existing loan uh, is really problematic for them. The, um, if you go with a new loan, then you're creating a situation where you're turning a mortgage servicer into an originator. That is somebody whose job it was to collect payments and set, and if the payments don't come, send out default notices. Now is in the business of originating loans. They may not have anyone who originates loans. They may not have, and, and they may not have a procedure for funding loans that are originated. Uh, you know, all all the all these front end processes they don't have, and whatever mortgage relief program you have, presumably you have some eligibility standards and you want to have people apply for the loan. But remember the Fannie Mae 1003, the, uh, the loan application. This was not designed for mortgage modifications. Uh, it, was not, you know, the, it was not designed to deal with whatever eligibility criteria you might have for mortgage relief. The, those eligibility criteria might be quite different um, than for a new loan. For example, there's there, some mortgage relief was targeted at what were called underwater mortgages. Well, how do you tell that a mortgage is underwater? That means that the loan amount is less let me write neatly the loan amount is less than the house price or sorry uh, greater than the house the current house price that's the definition of an underwater mortgage well somebody's got to verify that the house price has gone down is there is there going to be an appraisal in that process you know how, how is the el that eligibility going to be determined uh, you can write down criteria, but then who's supposed to implement these criteria? Um, you know, what kind of application, you know, what should be on the loan application? How should the lender go about verifying this stuff? And remember, once again, we're asking a servicer to do this. This, this A servicer doesn't have an appraisal shop. It doesn't have a, a, uh, people who are trained in loan applications. It doesn't have systems uh, for capturing data on loan applications. It doesn't have a funding process uh, to, to take a mortgage commitment, to um, you know, bring a check to settlement, and so on. You know, it doesn't have any of these processes in place, and yet uh, I don't think anyone really thought about the, these issues of business processes uh, when they tried these mortgage relief programs. So the moral of the story is, for me is that it is worth understanding how these processes work and how they're organized. And next time I'm going to talk about um, what that means in terms of what you, you can expect for how different uh, segments of the industry will perform based on how their um, what the industry structure is around these processes.